Hey, good morning everybody. Today we have a slightly unusual prototype for you, which uh, makes sense as I'm your slightly unusual knife reviewer. Oh, okay, very unusual. But today we're looking at the Avian Knives Topaza, and maybe you've seen this one pop up on the influencer circuit already, because I believe Shabazz was the prior homie giving it a look. I don't know if his video's gone live yet, but maybe it has. You know, sometimes I get the cool knives and sometimes I don't. They may not trust me, I get it. It comes back covered in sticky residue. Tape residue, let me clarify that. But this time they did, and today let's look at the Topaza, named after a hummingbird. You know, okay, I know this is a prototype here, but let's hear me out after my, you know, zip zipper pouch thing that I had. What if Avian Knives just included a random extra zipper pouch case they have with every knife? I'm sure they have enough. You, get, you accumulate a lot after a while. I threw away a Boker one that looked like it was wool. You know, someone would have appreciated it. Plus, this comment is dependent on the viewer having seen my recent Kaiser video, which I'll link at the end. And, and going by the raw number, most viewers haven't. Okay, so opening and holding this knife for the first time is a very unique experience. I don't know if everybody had this experience, but when I opened the 941 for the first time, the Benchmade, the weight and size and shape, it just felt different. It felt like it was an important knife. And the Avian is like that, the Avian Topaza. The Avian has several knives that are going to come out. Now, it isn't a tiny knife, but it's extremely light in the hand. Like, it's 20 grams lighter than the similarly sized 941. You aren't entirely prepared for it. Yeah, because I won't buy it. <laughs> Let's look at those dimensions though. Are you prepared for this? The old dimensions card, you know, well the newer, new one, because there was an old one. It's not like that new. The idea was this would make reviews shorter, but it did in fact not make them shorter. Saves me a little bit of time in editing though, not that anybody cares. Uh, the blue lines took me about 40 minutes adjusting them and getting them right, you know, adjusting my crop factor in my editing software. Uh, then, then I'd still screw up the dimensions. I'm sorry, sir, but 3.47 inches is not 20 centimeters. Um, the thing that hasn't changed, though, is I still screw it up. Now, the weight of the Topaza is directly attributed to its unusually thin blade stock and its extremely lightweight skeletonized frame. Pocket lint is going to love it. <laughs> and so are your keys. If you keep them in the pocket, do not carry anything in the pocket with the Topaza, just the pocket knife. I think these are going to retail for a little under 300 now, I have not yet held the Benchmade Narrows, and unless my life takes a turn for the worse, I don't intend to, but looking at the specs, because I did my own research, this one is just under 8 millimeters thick, the Topaza, and the Narrows is just over 7 millimeters, so we're looking like about less than a millimeter difference. This one could have been named the Narrows too, if only that name wasn't taken. However, the Narrows is just under an ounce heavier, so suck it, Narrows until, of course, the Narrows Lightweight comes along. Everybody's Googling Narrows Lightweight right now. Uh, blade here is made from MagnaCut, just like your grandpa's knife <laughs> that you bought for him, and he hates it. What the hell's the best tick? I want my buck back. Anyway, uh, I hope M390 realizes its days are numbered in gray titanium flippers because MagnaCut is the new one. So good luck there, Bowler. Uh, we have a bead blast finish and a flat grind, uh, although it looks like black DLC will also be available for those sorts of people. I will not cut with this knife because it is a proto loner. However, I would expect its blade stock and fine edge to perform extremely well for the great titanium flipper crowd. It will open all those knife boxes with ease. I know there's like a, a category of viewers out there that would like me to do um, edge retention tests and uh, I'm, not, I'm not ever going to do that. I'm sorry. Action and deployment. Here you have two options. You can flick it open via the port. You know, my middle finger works the best, or you can use the barely there tab. Both work extremely well, and once you get the tab geometry down, as in where you gotta hit that tab, because if you hit it in the wrong spot, you're gonna be like, ah, he's not opening. But if you hit it in the right spot, it's a dream, it flies out. Just gotta place the pressure on on the right spot, and it's extremely easy to deploy. And the hint is, the closer to the tip, the better and I realize how that sounds. So you pop it and it slings open very smoothly. It's thumb or pointer flipper. It is not a drop shut, but again, things need to be a drop shut. And there's five guys out there that say absolutely every knife I have is a drop shut. Handle is nice, it's not massive. If you like a big knife, well then this might be too tiny for your alpha mitts. 
It's pretty good though. You can see right through it. It has that cool skeletonization, a lot of milling work here. You know, the, the more expensive the knife is, it's been, the more that has been milled away from it. Pocket clip is milled titanium. What do you call this bump here? You know, uh, whatever it is, guys in the comments uh, that are already looking it up or telling me. It has a steep rise though. It stays in the pocket well, and if you have a Microtech or a cold steel, it's it kind of has that, I don't want to get out of your pocket uh, feel. If you like me and enjoy pocket wear on your Genkos or your Costco jorts, you will like this. You don't need to spend the money on Genkos if you just buy your Costco jorts like three sizes too big, dude. Save a little bit of money there. It's a little, it's a little lifestyle tip. I see kids these days are back into that. Ugh. Anyway, comparisons. First, the 941. Also a lightweight, very premium like the Topaza. And, of course, Pabst. This knife is a favorite of mine. Um, man, if I had a Pabst sponsorship, that would be pretty dope. I don't even need a lot. Like, I could just do... What, 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 would, a, what would an ad cost on my channel for every video? Like, 50 bucks a video? I think that's reasonable. Anyway... Any shitty beer companies want to reach out, not the Pabst is shitty, go right ahead. You thought the 941 disappeared into your pocket, huh? Not, not, yep. And a can of Pabst. If you have Genkos, a can of Pabst will disappear into your pocket. Now the Chris Reeves Sabenza 21 Large. If you remember, if you follow me and follow everything I do, you, you know that I sold it to a dude. Well, that dude said he didn't want it anymore. And they sold it back to me, and now uh, I have it, and now you have this story. I, I get it, though. The reason he sold it to me is the reason I sold it to him. Maybe he wants the 31. Maybe he just doesn't, you know, Chris Reeves knives, or they're not. Are Chris Reeves knives drop shut? Huh? Huh? All right, what about the HEA designs? Poison. Yeah, like the band, or uh, also like the green sticker. I mean, you were drunk, and the Windex looked like it was Gatorade. And it doesn't help that you put some... Uh, Windex in an old Gatorade bottle. Who among us, right? All right, that wraps it up. Uh, I wanted to make this a quick look, and I don't know if I succeeded. This is a pretty interesting pocket knife. I like it. Its lightness and its thinness are jaw-dropping. Now, my jaw sometimes is slack anyway, so it didn't have a whole, whole, whole lot further to drop. These are going to be purchasable on uh, the website soon. See the description below. Who knows what point in the next three or four weeks they will go live, but... The description will be updated once I know that. Thanks to Rit at Avian for letting me check this out. He designed the Avian, or he's Avian Knives is him, and he designed it under the Avian. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I could have asked him, I guess, since he did send this to me to take a look at. Now, Best Tech is the OEM here, and even though they are completely different knives, this one gives me Winter Blade Co. vibes. You know, Best Tech, as you know, OEMs for Winter Blade Co. And this is a very technically impressive and well-considered pocket knife, too, just like those. Like, those, the magnets and deployment are the gimmick and the fidget factor. This is, like, extremely lightweight. This is, that's the, the technical achievement here. Now, 1.6 ounces is basically magic, and you're going to have to trust me because I know a few magicians. This is probably the lightest titanium flipper out there and certainly in its size class. Way lighter than anything else, uh, actually outside of the size class, that doesn't run a synthetic or carbon fiber linerless handle. Uh, in this size, you will not find anything lighter. Most titanium flippers in this range start at about three ounces, and the sky is the limit. So um, I don't, I don't know how much I can emphasize the lightness of this and the impressive technical achievement that the Topaza is. That's why it's named after a hummingbird. It's, it's kind of on the nose. Anyway. Say hi to the patrons. They all have nice square jaws and beautiful hair. They keep me afloat when YouTube wants me to flush, and I won't. And for that, I thank them. Like, subscribe, comment. Thank you for watching.